All right, here's the line passing through the two points here, 6, 9, and 16, 13. Let me write this here. So 6, 9 is there, 16, 13 there. What we're after here is the linear symbolic rule that represents this line right here, uh, with the variables P and T representing the output and input respectively. And so here's the technique. To write it in slope-intercept form, you first got to start with the slope-intercept form and understand that any linear function can be written in this format. Um, not using y's and x's, but our variables given, p and t, your slope-intercept form looks like this. And to write your symbolic rule, you only need two things here, the slope, and place that there as the coefficient of the input variable, and then the vertical intercept. Well, the vertical intercept could be a problem because we'd have to estimate, but we're not going to do that. But the slope certainly we can find, you know, taking the difference of the outputs over the difference of the inputs. So using our slope here, you should get 13 minus 9, using our slope formula, I should say 13 minus 9 over 16 minus 6. Again, the slope is defined to be the change in the output divided by the change in the input. So you get these calculations, um, 2 over 5 or 0.4 if you put that in your calculator. And so now we can go back and say, oh, 0.4 must be the coefficient of the input variable in our symbolic rule. And that's right. So I would recommend writing that and then asking now, what is the vertical intercept of our line? And then that part of it goes there. Um, so what is the vertical intercept here? Um, we could estimate, which is probably not a good idea, using this version here of 0.4 over 1. And if you put two negatives on there, you don't change the value, but you can at least start here and go down 0.4 and over 1, down 0.4 and over 1. That could take you a while, and it's hard to guesstimate using the 0.4 if you go and if you do two negatives here you go down two that's better than over five one two three four five down two over five and you don't get actually the coordinates there using that so there's got to be a different way and there is and here is the technique look at we got three missing pieces here we have a p a t and a b we want to find b but if I knew a value for P and a value for T, I could replace those and then solve for B. And the question is, do we have a P and a T that we can use? A P value and a T value. And so look, we got a surplus. We got a P, we got a P and a T, and a P and a corresponding T. We got two points we can use. So here's the technique. You use a point. So this is a P and a T value, input, corresponding output, replace the P with 9, the T with 6 in here, and you'll have 2 out of 3 missing pieces, and you can find the third one. So here's what that looks like. Replace that output with 9, input with 6, and then do some algebra. Multiply that out, subtract the result from both sides. So you get 2.4, so B must be the subtraction of 9 and 2.4. So our B is 6.6 .6 there. Isn't that amazing? So our vertical intercept is actually 0, 6.6, .6, and in our symbolic rule, that guy must be 6.6. .6. So there's our symbolic rule right there um, uh, in all of its glory. And I would say go ahead and check. Let's check with this point here and plug in a 16 into our symbolic rule and verify we get a 13 coming out of there. So I'm going to do that. I'll prove it to you. 0.4 times, what is that, 16. Adding on a 6.6, .6, that better give me a 13, and it does. So I know now that that's my true symbolic rule that represents this line.